Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is finally freaking Friday. We have our live stream coming up in about two hours from now, Friday night. Hope you guys tune in. I've been a little bit busy today uh, taking care of working and fixing the roof leak and things to make sure the people stay dry when it rains. Um, ESPN. ESPN is so different than what they used to be. And by this, here's, here's what I want to say. I want you to understand I have seen all of the 88s play. All of them. Like, so, I mean, not in the stadium, but I'm old enough to have seen all of the 88s play from Drew Pearson on. I want you to understand that back in those days, you had the newspaper that you would go get the next morning, you know, on your front porch, pick it up, read about the sports news and things like that. Or... You would watch your 6 o'clock or 11 o'clock news. They'd have about five or six minutes of sports, which mostly was local sports. And then you would get Sports Illustrated on Thursday where you'd get full-colored pictures. But that was about it, other than ABC's Wild World of Sports, which covered, you know, the crazy different sports and stuff like that. They used to have, like, where they would drag guys behind cars and they'd let go to see how far that they could actually glide on the asphalt and stuff. Crazy shit like that. Intel ESPN. Oh, no, no, no. Excuse me. The precursor to ESPN was George Michael Sports Machine, which was the first syndicated nationally sports show that started at 1130 on Sunday nights until 12 o'clock. And he was bringing you highlights on all kinds of sports and stuff. And he was a big wrestling guy, too. He loved wrestling. Intel ESPN. And when ESPN came up and the whole idea of it on cable TV, they, they were talking about 24-hour sports station. And we were like, there's not enough sports in the world to have 24, 24 hours of sports. Are you kidding me? But yeah, and here it was, Sports Center. You'd see Sports Center, all the highlights and takes and things like that, and you can make your own decision. Well, Sports Center has kind of gone away, and now it's a whole bunch of idiots that are there. They used to have people that had real knowledge about sports and, you know, were specialists in this stuff. Now you got guys like Dan Orlowski. And Dan Orlowski, that guy sucked so bad, he literally lost a game for the Detroit Lions running out of the back of the end zone, not realizing he stepped out. When it comes to races, he couldn't even get out the garage. He couldn't get the damn garage door open. He ran the car into the garage door. And so today, there's another one of the dumb takes. Because we always have dumb takes when it comes to Dak Prescott. We've heard, you know, things. Oh, the Cowboys should let Dak Prescott walk and they should trade for Derek Carr. Oh, Andy Dalton. There's no drop-off from Andy Dalton to Dak Prescott. This is a message to Dak. Oh, Trey Lance, that guy. Yeah, okay, he's here to take Dak Prescott's job. Okay. And Mike Tenenbaum is one of these mother humpers who always seem to come up with the craziest takes and people run around with it. Now, who is Mike Tenenbaum? He's an NFL, former NFL executive. So you say, okay, he's worked in the front office. Yes, he worked for about six years in the Jets' front office. I think the best season they had was like 10 and 6. And then he worked for the Miami Dolphins for them for like, 2015 to 2018 or something like that and you can say okay you're just kind of eh and you've been unemployed and working on ESPN and just because you have a job with the company doesn't mean that you're actually very good and here's what I'll say those who can do those who can't talk about those who can now can you or can you not no, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people or can you step up so Jordan Lewis retweeted or tweeted a clip and says, I can't emphasize enough how much I hate you mofos. And this was the clip that 
is out here, okay? How this are they going to do it, Mike T? You told us in the meeting this morning. You're saying to yourself, wait a minute, the Cowboys aren't going to be that bad, right? Like the Cowboys would have, right. Shadur Sanders is going to be the first pick, the third pick, the sixth pick. How do they go up there and get that deal? Let's say Dallas is 15, 18, somewhere in the draft or a greenie, trade multiple first round picks and maybe C.D. Lamb. And you know, C.D. Part- Lamb? Part- so, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. 15 or 18? 15 or 18? Here's the thing. I think San Francisco was 12 to trade up to two or three to get Trey Lance. And it was three number ones and some other stuff. What are you talking about? And the Cowboys with Dak Prescott will probably be a playoff team. So they may be in the 20s. Can I get CD Lamb out of town? And Bart brought up, well, I'm going to give you some credit. Like, let's say it's New England that has the second pick in the draft, and they have everything. Right. They have a quarterback and nothing else. So if you're starting over, yes, C.D. Lamb is expendable. I mean, there's a C. better Lamb chance. C.D. Lamb is expendable. He's yes. The there's a best. better chance, in my opinion, that Shador Sanders could be the quarterback there next year than Dak Prescott at this point. Oh, Dak, I don't agree with if that. If Dak wanted to be there, their deal would have been done. And the way it's going right now is Dallas is going to need a quarterback in the first round next year. And it would be a type of move where Jerry Jones could go up and say, hey, I got a younger, better, cheaper quarterback in Shador than I did with that. That is the dumbest bullshit I've ever heard. And, and he is famous for all these great conspiracy theories. So I want to go ahead. So, so we understand when we hear this kind of stuff where it comes from. Okay? Where it comes from. And shout out to Isaiah Season who did this video. Okay? about Mike Tenenbaum. And I want to play a little bit of this because it's kind of spot on. And a second round pick to the New York Giants for Daniel Jones. And hear me out. If you're the Cleveland Browns, you have Dorian Thompson Robinson, you have Joe Flacco, and now a 27-year-old Daniel Jones who has one year left of guaranteed money for $36 million and an so enormous amount of flexibility was trade moving Deshaun forward. Watson for and if Daniel you're the Jones. Giants, you're getting Deshaun Watson, who's Are you? 29, Are you? who's making $46 million a year for the next three years and a second round pick. And to me, you need a front line difference making quarterback. Because, Bart, right now, if you're the Giants, how in the world do you win the NFC when you have to beat San Francisco, Green Bay, Dallas, Philly, and Detroit? With Daniel and I, Jones, right. Yeah, with Daniel Jones. So to me, Deshaun Watson hasn't played well the last couple of years, but he has a high upside, and he's only 29 <laughs> years old. So, so, so. Who yeah. says no? The Browns say no. <laughs> the, the, the Arizona. Mike T, explain that Tannenbaum. All right. J.J. McCarthy is six years younger than Kyler Murray. I think he has a really high floor. This guy lost one game in college. He is perfect size, and he's only get better because he was in an offense that just didn't showcase his talent. So when we can save $27 million a year and be younger and more durable than Kyler Murray, who hasn't played a full season since 2020, that's an easy decision for the Arizona Cardinals. So they would take the quarterback there, and then what of Kyler Murray? Go through the rest of the Tannenbaums here. Yep, so we're going to trade Kyler Murray and a third-round pick to the Minnesota Vikings for the 11th pick. This actually works out really well. It's a very tradable contract because he has guaranteed money this year, next year. And now if you're Minnesota, you're actually nine years younger than Kirk Cousins and $10 million per year cheaper. So this is actually a good move for Minnesota. And now if you're Arizona with the 11th pick, you could take a corner, which they desperately need. So to me, I don't understand who would say no between Arizona and Minnesota. They both get younger and less expensive than their current situation. That he doesn't, no matter what it is you want to do. Mark T? Yeah, I think he would actually be a, a great fit with the New York Jets, and here's why. Oh, my God. Russell Wilson why you want to Jets? Aaron Rodgers uh, and Russell Wilson? Absolutely. Pay him a million dollars and let him resurrect his career. <laughs> I actually have experience with this. Vinny Testimony got cut by the this. Baltimore Ravens. We signed him in June and went to the championship game that year. So if you're if you're Russell Wilson and you don't That's get no uh, early, Mike. Hey Bart, if you but if where, where else is he gonna go? He has to resurrect his career. So if you have to sit for a year, why not sit behind one of the greatest of all times and then be a free agent again? 
It's when when what, when I was reasons. guys, where is he going to go? He's 36 years old. No one's going to hand him a starting job. He's going to have to Pittsburgh be a backup did. somewhere. The, the, so that's why to me, Pittsburgh when did. I was thinking about Russell Wilson in Atlanta, I don't think the timing really works there. Gross, speak to the Jets. Speak to the Jets. How does it work with the Jets? Do you know who's running the Jets right now? Aaron Rodgers. That's correct. Yeah. You, what do you think he's going to say if they want to bring in Russell Wilson? So the Jets need three things. They need a backup quarterback. They need an offensive lineman that they're going to draft. And they need a receiver. Uh -huh. Who is the veteran, inexpensive quarterback that could go in? What really sunk the Jets Sorry, last year. Oh, that's a good name. What really sunk the Jets last year was they didn't Gardner have a Minshew. competent ba uh, backup. <laughs> Gardner Minshew's not leaving Indy. So that's what I'm saying. If you're the Jets, you've got to find somebody. It's not as easy to find as you think it is. Best quarterback in this class, Mike. I'm, I'm going to Greeny, it's BYU Zach Wilson. Zach is a... So for all of you out there that are getting bent out of shape about, oh, the rumors of Secure Sanders to the Dallas Cowboys... This idiot out here is the one who's just literally throwing shit on the wall that doesn't amount to a hill of beans. All righty, good people. I'll see you at our live stream. Be sure to be there, 9 p.m. Peace out.